Got enough light? Yep. All right. Well, good morning. This is uh, uh, <coughs> Mike Yazina of Men Menorcan Magic uh, Handmade Cast Nets. I'm going to do a little video today. Uh, it's going to be some repeat stuff, but have, I guess I'm having some issues. People are having issues with that one particular knot they call the Flying Dutchman. Now, uh, understand that uh, what I, everything I teach is based on my Menorcan heritage. We never, wasn't no such thing as a Flying Dutchman. We simply call the two knots, the old, the old Spanish knot and the, the, uh, the new knot, what they call Flying Dutchman, we simply call the, the English knot, from, different from the time period. But anyway, before we get started, uh, I want to give a little pitch to uh, a place here where I get my uh, decron material from. And uh, this guy's been a tremendous help with me getting this stuff because it's, it's hard to find. Well, we, well, we were getting stuff from from uh, Tackle Direct. Uh, what was it called, Phil? Tough Line, wasn't it? Yeah, Tough it, Line. It was a really good material, but they quit, they, they quit handling it. They can't get it. Been probably two years, so um, I fell into a problem with running out of material, didn't know where to get it, and I'd gotten a call from Captain Phil Harwath, H O W A R T H, uh, who owns uh, the two largest outfitter shops in the Northeast, up in up in Cape Cod, uh, Goose Hammock, Hammock, H U M M O K, not Hammock, it's Hammock. H Goose Hummock Shops, <clears throat> and uh, the name of those are uh, TheMightyFish.com, GooseHummockShops.com. Uh, they're in Orleans, Mass. Anyway, he's been very helpful, and he called me looking for a net. And I told him I'd love to make it for you, but I'm having trouble finding the material. <laughs> right away, he said, well, I can, I can probably help you with that, and, and, which he did, indeed he has. He's been a tremendous help with uh, me getting this stuff. Now, the material that I get is Cortland. Cortland Line Company's been around for 100 years. They've been producing Dacron for 50 years or more. Uh, anyway, they're easy to find. Uh, if you want to look them up, just do a, a Google search, CortlandLineCompany.com, and you can uh, buy directly from them. And they have different colors, as you can see. Uh, people enjoy, I use a blue and a chartreuse and an orange and a, a rose color. Uh, and they, uh, people really, really like it. Now they carry quite a, uh, they carry two, three other colors, white, uh, moss green and black, probably some less desirable colors, I would say. But they are good people to deal with. And the name of them is Cortland Line. And you want to, uh, you want to use Micron, M-I-C-R-O-N, Micron uh, fly line backing. That's what I'm using. It's really good. It's smooth to, to, to uh, knit with. It, it, it's smooth. It ties a, a good knot, a tight knot. And by the way, I think I've, I've tried to express to people in the past, do not try to learn with Dacron, please. It's too hard to untie the knot. You're going to make mistakes. There's no way you can learn this without making uh, mu mucho mistakes until you master it. So what I said, you want to you want to stick to the uh, nylon, the uh, Memphis net and twine people in Memphis, Tennessee. They carry everything you need in that line. They don't. They do not sell Dacron, uh, but they sell all your nylon, the, the twines, and the, and you want to start with a. a Get the bonded because they have a simple twisted nylon, which the bonded is twisted, but it's got a coating on it. So you want to uh, start with the bonded, and uh, I recommend I start with a uh, uh, number four if you want to start and learn to uh, to do that. Anyway, back to the knots. Now, what I want to talk about today and demonstrate to you today is uh, the Flying Dutchman. Now that is a, that knot's been around a lot less. The original knot that uh, I'm going to show you very briefly because I don't like using it because you you got to really be on top of your game because that if you uh, uh, you want to you have to 
when you tie that thing, it has to be up on top of your loop. If you tie it, if it slips below that loop, when you tie it, you've got a slip knot. That's that's not good. The uh, the old knot been around thousands of years. That's probably the first knot that was ever used. I know that webbing, net making, I know I've found goes back 10,000 years. Further than that, there's been actually little remnants of, of webbing that go back much, much further that were found. But uh, anyhow, uh, then comes along the new knot which uh, I'm an Orkin ancestors use. Now, I, the farthest I could go back with that, that it was, to know that it was being used in the middle 1700s is when it was first uh, 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 came in, into use. And it's been used ever since. Uh, when I first started the uh, doing this stuff, about everybody used the, the old knot. That old Spanish knot, which is a slip knot, what I like, I refer to it as a slip knot. And, uh, but, uh, it's easy to learn with it. If you want to learn how to start, to make, start a net, make a net, I've got numerous videos on YouTube, as this one will be, uh, which show you step by step how to start the net, you know, uh, how to tie the knots and uh, put in the windings and everything that you need to know. You can find that, in, they're on there. So I've covered everything. However, I keep getting folks uh, uh, writing me, telling me about the, uh, the Flying Dutchman is kicking their butt. And it is definitely more difficult to master than the old knot. Because <laughs> the old knot, it just simply, it's just a, it's a, just ties a clove hitch. Or you just simply pick up, you pick up the mesh. You getting that, Phil? Mm -hmm. You pick up the mesh and you pull it down. And then here's the key. This is what. Now I looked at a video on YouTube yesterday of a guy that was demonstrating the two knots. He did an excellent job, and and he stressed a point that's so dear to me, and that is, uh, if you don't tie this knot on top of the loop. If you let it slide down below that loop, you've got a slip knot. If that happens to you, my suggestion to you would be you don't worry about untying it. Just simply tie another knot right over the top of that one, but make sure it's just up on the top. Okay, you see what I did? I'm going to do this again. I'm going to make sure you understand what I'm doing. I'm going to pick up that mesh. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to hold it super tight against the, 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 this gauge. By the way, the gauge that I've got some diagrams of that original uh, Flying Dutchman knot and the, and the person, he was knitting with uh, linen. I could tell the material that he was using. It was linen. And he used a, a dowel around a piece of metal was his mesh board. I've not, I've, people do use that. Still today, they use it. And uh, in fact, there's somebody with a, a video on YouTube showing uh, he's... he's He's showing you how to make a net. He's using the Flying Dutchman, and he's using that, I think it's a little metal round piece of tubing he's using. But Hey, whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong way, I'll tell you that many times. All right, I pull this knot down, I'm holding, I'm going to hold that line tight. You simply throw a loop. That's all this is to it. You throw a loop, you come down underneath, you come in between, in between this mesh or loop. And uh, can, you, can you see what it's doing, Phil? It's just tying a simple, you got it? And now I'm going to tie that, oop, bam, right up on top. See, I'm on top of that. I'm on top of that mesh, and that's not a slip knot. That, that's, a, that's a good tight, a good knot for what it can be. All right. I want to get off of that subject. I, I don't, this is a, I'm making this net for a real good friend of mine. I don't, I want it to be perfect. So now let's talk about the, the flying Dutchman. Where did that come from? I don't, I don't have no. I don't have no idea. But uh, we know the story of the flying Dutchman. That was a ghost ship, wasn't it, Phil? That was yes, a, it was. some kind of a ghost ship. They don't really know. I mean, from like two, three thousand years or something. I, I don't know. But uh, how, how it got in connection with this knot, I don't. I can't tell you. All right. 
Now, the, the Flying Dutchman, it's, it's different. Basically, these are the two fingers right here. You want this, you're going to use these two and this one. These two, if they weren't there, it would be great, but, uh, but they are there, so you, you need them for your fu uh, function with your hand, but they're, they're really... Show me your fingers again. Show me the fingers again. What's that? Show the fingers again. Like, okay, you're going to use these two fingers, because they're going to pinch the mesh to the bottom and you hold it to the board, and the little finger is where the line's going to loop around. So these are the three the three fingers that, that you, that's used in this flying dustman. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come around, <coughs> come over the top of the board from that last mesh, and I'm going to make a loop. See how I make that loop around that little finger. Now, and I do the same thing. I throw a loop here, just like I did with the old knot. But the difference with this, I'm going to come back around from the back side. Do not go this side. Come around the back side, pick up that next mesh or loop, just like uh, the other knot. Now, you're going to pull it down tight against that board. Can you see that, Phil? I'm holding that. You see that good? Yep. See that line around that little finger? I'm going to come back. Now, when you feel pressure, when you feel pressure on your little finger, that knot starting to tie, that's when you you don't let that knot go. You just let it pull off your finger. Do not release your grip with this finger. That's important. Make sure you keep that grip. And that knot's going to tie. Bam. It's simple because I know how to do it. You know, <laughs> it's not simple. It be, when you learn how to do it, you're going to laugh about this. You're going to say, well, that guy was right. That old fart was right. It is easy. But until you learn it, it's a pain in the butt. And, and believe me, I, I mean, I've, I've helped people, I've taught people right here uh, and other places all through the years how to knit. And the old knot, they mastered pretty quick, but the, the new knot or Flying Dutchman, it took them a while. And they, they, well, some just got frustrated and quit. Well, you know, it isn't for everybody. All right, around the little finger. See, I'm coming back off the top, around that little finger. I'm going to make that loop. I'm going to come in between here. <clears throat> I'm going to pick that mesh up, all this in nice slow motion. And see what I'm doing? I'm pulling this. Now, remember to keep this finger tight. Keep it up against that, that line so it can't move. If, if you release that, that's when this mesh can slip on you and you're gonna tie the knot below it. You're gonna end up with a big mesh instead of the size you're supposed to have, believe me. Now, I'll keep that tight. I'm pulling on that little, I feel that tension on that little finger. Then I just simply let it go. But see that finger, I remain tight. And the top, I kept that, that knot mesh tight against that board. Come around, throw my loop. Come back in between that loop. I'm picking up that mesh. I'm going to pull it down tight against that board. Keep it tight. That finger helps you keep it. Well, the finger keeps it tight. And do not let this bag on you. If it's, it's going to have a tendency to come off on you, make sure that you keep it tight. If you have an issue, back up. Don't try to correct it. Just back up, untie what you've done, and start over. You don't want to mess up that way. Then I'm going to, bam, pull it. I let that one go. I shouldn't have for, for teaching purposes. But again, this is second nature to me. And uh, what you want to do, I see something I don't like. Now these things, well, if you have a tendency, you know what's funny? When you, you, you'll learn yourself and the process, especially when you can't have C, when you start process of untying knots, you, you'll tie a couple more <laughs> while you're trying to untie the one. You know, I see something I don't like. I don't continue. For some reason, that, that you can't see that. That knot Hold. tied, it tied below that thing on me. Rarely. But it's because if, if you picked up, when I let that thing off my little finger, which I, I said, I told you I shouldn't have done that. I'll just simply grab that, pull it, and it pull right back up on top, right back where I'm supposed to be. 
All right. Round the finger, make the loop. Pick up and make sure you get the right mesh. Now it's easy to reach over here and pick up one on that side and you've got yourself a mess to untie. I'm pulling that down snug and bam, a little quick tie and I've got that knot. Round that little finger in between. Pick up the mesh. Come on down. Feel pressure on the little finger and let it, it pull it off of it. Don't take your finger off of it. Pull it off of it. Around the little finger. Pick up the mesh. And see what that see what that did? Can you see that, Phil? Let me close it. See how see how that loop grabbed that finger instead of it's it's supposed to be off up here like this. See what it did? That will happen to you. Immediately pull it off. And uh so that doesn't doesn't occur, but it once in a great while it'll it, it'll do that. <coughs> Now, I'm just follow me what I'm doing. I'm picking that mesh up, pulling it, make sure that you get that thing tight. All right, throw my loop. I don't know how else to do this. I don't know how, how any better to explain it to you. I just hope that, uh, that you're not taking this the wrong way, but... Uh, this is a little uh, Dacron, will be a little Dacron. It's gonna be a six foot uh, net for a very, very dear friend of mine, a, a lady who I uh, made a uh, linen net for her a few years back. Cause she teaches, uh, she's a history teacher. She's a college professor. She teaches Menorcan history. And uh, I made her a, a, uh, she wanted a net that our early Menorcan ancestors would have had. And uh, back in, in 1777, when the Menorcans settled in St. Augustine, when they walked up from New Smyrna, they started New Smyrna in 1768. I ended up walking that last 70 miles from New Smyrna to St. Augustine when the when Indigo Plantation fell. And uh, they settled in St. Augustine, 1777, where they, you know, I don't know, there was less than 600, I think, that actually survived out of 1,300, nine, nine years of misery in New Smyrna. But anyway, that's another story. I'm not a historian. I don't want to get on that one. But anyway, uh, so uh, the early material that was used would have been, you know, grasses, flax, wheat, oh, anything they could get to make twine out of the, the early people would have used. Uh, but uh, the most recent would have been linen made from the flax plants that grown in uh, Mediterranean material that I made that net for her came from Egypt. She, uh, she, uh, she, she got all the material because she said, if I get all the material, you tell me what I need and uh, I'll get it, which she did. Linen. Now, Cotton came along in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Uh, cotton kind of took over for linen, and uh, which it remained till wow. Dupont uh, they, uh, found, uh, patented synthetic materials in 1939, which was uh, nylon, and, and it mushroomed into you know your, your other synthetic materials. Uh, monofilament and such. And uh, when I started making this, they were still using cotton. And uh, so, then we went from uh, cotton to nylon and presently to Dacron. I'm gonna just show you this. I'm running, I don't, I'm, I'm bothering you, boring you. One last quick time. Around that little finger. And we'll throw that loop. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna pick up that mesh. Pull that needle through. And I'm going to come down, pull it up tight, keep it tight until I pull the knot. Okay, I think I've got that point across to you, I think, pretty well. Uh, now, uh, I have a little website, I really shorten it. Uh, if you want to look at that, it's M E N O R C A N magic.com. Uh, if you want to contact us, 
My email, the easiest email to reach me on is uh, Uzina Mike, U S I N A M I K E, at gmail.com. If you want to call, uh, air, it's 904 217 7974. With all of that said and all of the BS I'll sit here and, and throw upon you, I hope everybody's having a marvelous summer. Uh, it's the uh, 11th of uh, August here. Soon be time for the mullet run. Wow, that's something we used to always look forward to was come September. By the middle of September, the mullets start running up the East Coast. And uh, boy, I used to, couldn't wait for that. So, anyway, I do have a uh, seven foot Decron net available and a 10 foot Decron net available if anybody's interested. Give me a shout about that. And for goodness sake, everybody, please stay safe, stay out of trouble. Enjoy yourself if you're net makers, enjoy what you're doing as much as I do. And Phil, my buddy Phil here, he's, he and I just kind of bonded, I guess. But anyway, with, with all of this said, take care of yourself. Until the next time, God bless you.